What's going on, guys? Welcome back to Winter Wolf's Den. Winter Wolf here, as usual, flying solo today. Going to do something a little bit different. Instead of going on a typical rant about Disney and Marvel and Star Wars and some other things, I think I'd like to start putting some of my own work out there for people to kind of, you know, take a look at, critique, review, enjoy, however they want to consume it. So I'm going to give you guys chapter one out of one of my unpublished books I finished a couple years ago. Its working title was Heretic. Don't let that be a trigger warning or anything. The book is not religiously themed, just kind of like a code word that's used within the larger stories. You guys will find out if you sit through it. So this is chapter one of the novel. I think it's about 40 or so chapters. We'll see you know, if this if this does well. We'll you know do more chapters a couple times a week. Uh, it is a full-length piece of fiction. It's about 400 pages in print. Um, it's categorized probably urban fantasy, dark fantasy, in the style of Jim Butcher's Dresden Files, or Benedict Jaca's Alex Veru's cases, stuff like that. So you get some modern magic mixed with some technology, mixed with you know invisible world magic, um, that kind of stuff. But without any further ado, we're gonna get into it. I hope you guys enjoy. Stick around, sub to the channel if you like what you hear, comment, critique, criticize, whatever. Just don't be a dick, and um, we'll see you out there. The sun-bleached gargoyle leered from its gabled perch atop the roof of our sister Sorrow Hospital. The stone beast gaze burned repulsively. Cracked rim-like horns and chipped fangs added an extra level of menace, likely responsible for countless shivering spines over the decades. I glared right back at the gargoyle's ugly mug. Something on your mind, Quasimodo? I'd seen swarming flights of gargoyles, hundreds strong when the fiends had actually soared on night winds blacker than the pit itself. That sight had twisted 13-year-old me's stomach into ice-cold knots. Pushing 30, stone facsimiles don't do much in the way of impressing me anymore. The staring contest ran another minute before the spiteful July sun convinced me to blink. I didn't think so, I mumbled. Something tapped my shoulder and I flinched. I snapped around, locating the bit of candy as it tumbled into the ambulance bay. A tiny snicker came from behind one of the ancient trees overlooking the hospital's imposing facade. I shifted the weight of the leaf blower strap to my back. Not funny, I stalked toward the tree line. A fresh, stifled giggle arose. Why don't you come out and fight fair? Miriam Rosario leaned out from behind the tree's broad trunk, grinning devilishly. She had curly, honey-blonde hair, a few ticks darker than her perpetually tanned skin. Her nurse's hospital scrubs didn't do her figure justice. She tossed a second candy from palm to palm. Really? Why on earth would I do that? She asked, eyes flickering playfully. Her voice carried a melodious roll of Castilian Spanish. I fought the smile tugging the corners of my mouth. Because I didn't take you playing for dirty, Ms. Rosario, that's why. I took mock aim with the leaf blower's barrel. Miriam wound up for a second throw, eyes slightly widening. You sure you want me to do that, tough guy? Bring it on, I replied. Unless you think I can't hit a moving... Miriam flicked her wrist and the candy arced silently through the air and plunked my nose. I froze in my tracks. The nurse planted her fists on her hips and beamed a satisfied smile. You were saying? I rubbed my nose and chuckled. Not bad, Miri. Truce? Truce, Miri replied. She took a seat on a nearby bench and tucked her knees up to her chin. Sit for a minute before I have to run back to the seventh circle? I want to ask you something. My smile dissolved as I grabbed a seat. If this is about your sister again, I'm going to keep bringing her up until you come to your senses. Jessica's a good girl, Jake, and she really likes you. All she does is talk about your date. Still. I sighed, leaned my forearms onto my knees. Come on. That was two months ago. We've had this chat a dozen times, minimum. Listen, she's a nice girl. She's pretty, funny, marvelous backside. Miri swatted my shoulder. Pig, that's my baby sister. She cocked an eyebrow and jutted her chin out. But you're right, meticulously sculpted rear ends do run in the family. We shared a laugh, but it ended a beat quicker than I'd have liked. Miri propped her chin onto her knees. You really won't call her? Sorry, I tried. I'm just not there yet, I said. Nina really must have done a number on you, huh? Nina. I puffed a long breath through pursed lips. I told you it wasn't like that. Uh-huh, Miri replied. Still sticking to the whole I walked out on her story. That stung. I crossed my arms and scowled. It's the truth. Miri's full lips parted, revealing a pearly white playful smile. Okay, okay, it's what happened. Stop pouting. She reached over and pinched my cheek. It's a bad look on you, tough guy. I mocked a snapping bite at her hand, and Miri jerked her fingers free. Mary blew an errant strand of hair from her face. Inspiration dawned a moment later, making her dimples pop. What about coming to my 4th of July party? Don't tell me you don't like parties either, she said. Nobody can turn down my sister and one of my legendary blowouts in the same lifetime. I sucked in a breath. 
I don't. Don't bother. He's not party material, babe, a man's voice said acerbically. I tilted my head back, stifling a groan. Rubber soles scuffed the sidewalk behind me, and an athletic form stepped into view. Miri squealed and practically jumped off the bench into her boyfriend's wiry arms. They kissed, keeping their arms cinched around one another when they broke. How adorable. Kenneth Tanaka was a touch over six feet and looked like he'd just stepped off the cover of a K-pop magazine, hair gel and all. His t-shirt screamed, Look at me, I work out! And his designer jeans would have set me back a paycheck. He wasn't all show, though. A razor-shot mind for medicine and earned him the top spot among our sister sorrow current crop of residents. None of that changed my opinion of the man. Douche capital bag. Hey, Kenny, I said. Heading backstage? Tanaka squinted at me like he'd been asked to translate a Dead Sea Scroll, but my jab hadn't been enough to derail him. I don't think Winters here is really a party type of guy, he said, ignoring my most sincere attempt at conversation. I'm guessing he'd like to spend his weekend off hanging out with his gargoyles, or maybe he's planning on drumming up a couple of fairies instead. My face tightened. Tanaka was all talk, but the act had worn thin months ago. One of these days. Miri slapped him on the chest. Kenny, her expression darkened. That's not funny. I told you not to make fun of that stuff. It's serious. I don't know how much Miri had told Kenny about her incident. Breaking people into the supernatural reality of the world was next to impossible. Think carrying an egg during a blindfolded spoon race. Up Mount Everest. It hadn't always been like that. From the beginning, that's beginning with a capital B, mortals have always been plugged into the essence. That's the natural flow of magical energy for you newbies. After centuries of supernatural conflict, the unity single-handedly unplugged most of humanity in a single magical stroke. Cut off from the essence, humanity learned to lean on another divine gift, innovation. And thus modern science became complicit in enabling most people to believe that magic and monsters were nothing but bedtime stories for children. Shortly after I started working maintenance at our sister's sorrow hospital a year ago, Mary had noticed me reading up on Lovecraft and the original grim fairy tales. Assuming I was an expert on the subject for some reason, she'd asked me about the strange sounds coming from every closet she's ever had. Long story short, I banished a particularly nasty boggart on her behalf, and Mary and I had been tight ever since. Come on, he knows I'm just messing around. Tanaka shot me a glance. Right? I didn't want to cause Mary any trouble. Yeah, messing around. Guy stuff, I finally said. Tanaka shrugged and inquired if Miri was satisfied. She didn't get the chance to answer. The blast shockwave struck like a cannon shot. My ears popped, and on reflex, I shielded my eyes. To his credit, Kenny spun Miri away from the horrible sound, shielding her with his body. Scarlet flame gnawed the tail end of an MBTA bus as it corkscrewed, slinging a barrage of broken glass and metal debris into the air. White gold sparks geysered from beneath the ruined vehicle as it crushed a line of expensive cars, occupying the hospital's premier parking spots like a monster truck. The screeching sounds of metal being mangled pierced my ears like hot irons. The violent interruption of Boston's afternoon commute died. A stillness, terrible, muted, smothered the busy street. Pedestrians and drivers alike froze into shocked mannequins, jaws slackened, fingers pointing. The peace wasn't meant to last, though. Any second now. A chorus of agonized wails and pleas for help pierced the silence in sudden gut-wrenching waves. Smoke poured from the bus, filling the air with an acrid black stain. Silhouettes staggered from the wreckage's doors. Others dragged themselves from the shattered windows. One faceless form, maybe a man, I couldn't tell, fell to its knees, then slumped face down. Gags and sputtering coughs filled the air. Smoke-stained, tattered survivors reached for light beyond the suffocating cloud. I shut my eyes and filled my ears with lead. I'd seen enough suffering for two lifetimes. The unity knew all about making people suffer. Under the Crimson Glaives banner, I'd fought them firsthand. A little voice in my head reined me in against the awful background of wailing agony. Step out of it, dumbass. People are hurt. It's time to go to work. Hey guys, thanks for checking out Chapter 1 of Heretic by your boy Winter Wolf. If you like what you hear, check back with the channel. Maybe consider subscribing. Maybe consider dropping a like and commenting on the content. And I'm happy to throw out more chapters as we go. I'll see you guys in the next one.